what on earth is happening to my patient's masseters and why are they bulging out of her face like that? This is called paradoxical bulging and it happens after treating a patient in their masseters with any type of neurotoxin. Botox, Dysport, Juvo, Xeomin, Daxify, Latibo, any of the neurotoxins on the market, what happens is, is either A, part of the muscle wasn't treated or B, she's requiring more units. But let's get into exactly the anatomy and why this is happening. The masseter muscle is one of the primary muscles involved in clenching and chewing. And a study came out in 2021 that explained that the masseter muscle has two bellies. There's a superficial belly and a deep belly. And in between these bellies is something called the deep inferior tendon. Now, when you're treating a masseter muscle with Botox or neurotoxin, your goal is to hit both bellies. And I think of these bellies as a beautiful relationship. Let's say you hit the deep belly with neurotoxin and you weaken this belly. Because this is such a beautiful relationship, the superficial belly that wasn't hit with neurotoxin is going to overcompensate and pick up the slack of the weakened deep belly. So it's like when you're sick, your spouse will pick up the slack because you're weak, right? Same concept. This is weak, so the master, the superficial belly is going to overcompensate and bulge out to pick up the slack of the weakened muscle. Now, a newer study came out that showed in 2025 or 2024, I'll pin it right here, showed that there might be three bellies. Through ultrasound studies, they were able to see three um, kind of layers of the masseter. But for simple purposes, I like to think of it as the deep belly, the superficial belly, and then the deep inferior tendon. And what happens is, like I said, it overcompensates in bulge. And what you can do is go back in and you can add more units. What can also happen to create this bulge is that the patient required more units. So typically for my patients, I use 20 units per side to start. Sometimes if they're wildly um, hypertrophied, I will start them on 25 units, but typically my baseline starting point is 20 units because I always like to tell my patients, I want to see if you can get a result with the least amount of units possible. If they come in wanting just 10 units, I always explain to them, I think you're going to be highly disappointed because this master to muscle is so big and juicy that it's just not going to work. And oftentimes it can create a bulge experience as well because if you don't knock out the entire muscle because you used too few units then what can happen is you experience that paradoxical bulging as well i also tell my patients that while the tox is kicking in in that first week it's not uncommon to experience almost a temporary bulge because that some of that Botox is kicking in, maybe not all of the Botox has kicked in, and then it takes time. And I always tell my patients, give it a full week before we decide if it's a true paradoxical bulging, because in that temporary phase of the tox settling in, it can happen. So three reasons why paradoxical bulging can happen. One, you didn't hit both bellies of that muscle. Two, you your patient requires more units in order to knock out the whole muscle. Or three, it's in that... Um, settling in phase where it could still be kind of getting settled in. I'm not, I'm trying to figure out what word I'm trying, still trying to activate um, in that first week so you can experience a bulge in that first week. So always give it a, for a full week before you say, yeah, we need to retreat this. Now, this is what I do in order to, now remember, this is my patient. So I did this to my patient. This is what I do and how I shifted to creating or to stopping any of these um, paradoxical bulges, bulges from happening. And since I've done this, it's probably only happened one or two times. I have one patient that is so wildly hypertrophied in her masseters that it's almost impossible not to bulge her every single time, especially in that first week. Because I kid you not, it truly feels like she has two golf balls back here. And it improves her quality of life so, so much when we treat her, her masseters and she bulges. I kid you not every single time. But aside from that one patient, since I've started using a biphasic technique approach, I haven't had any bulging issues with my patients. And what is the biphasic um, technique? The biphasic technique is when you take a needle, your, I use a 12 millimeter uh, 31 gauge needle. So I use the normal insulin needles, but this one is longer. So usually my, my tox needles are eight millimeters. This one's a 12 millimeter. Sometimes, for example, with the patient that always bulges, sometimes I'll grab a one inch needle for her. The goal is for your needle length 
you have to be able to engage with that bone. Because what the biphasic injection technique is, is a full retrograde injection from the bone basically to the dermis. So what I do is I insert my needle into the masseter and engage with the bone. If I cannot engage with the bone because the needle is too short, I pull out and grab another needle and then make sure I can. So I go all the way down to the bone and I retrograde inject as I'm coming all the way out to ensure that I hit the deep and the superficial belly of the muscle. And then I go next to it, all the way down to the bone, retrograde inject. Then I go down low, all the way down to the bone, retrograde inject. Now what's really important is you want to avoid that rhizorius muscle. So I always mark a line where my earlobe is to basically, which is where the boundary of the rhizorius typically lives. I always explain to my patient that even with me trying to target the masseter muscle only, things can happen and sometimes it can bleed into the rhizorius and it'll impact your smile. Remember that rhizorius's function is to pull out the corner of our mouth when we smile. So if any tox bleeds into that, then you're going to have a wonky asymmetric smile. I will say humbly that it's happened to me once in my career and my patient had an asymmetric smile for about three weeks. Um, but it resolved and she was absolutely fine and she was such a good sport about it. I was so grateful that she was so kind about it, but she was a little wonky for about three weeks. That's the one time it's happened in my career. So I explained to my patients, it can happen. And our goal is obviously for it not to happen, but it is a risk that we take. I also talked to them about the potential of worsening the appearance of their jowls because of removing that tension in the gonial angle where we're pulling back skin. I explain all of these things, but that biphasic injection technique sitting below the earlobe to avoid the rhizorius will really help minimize the risk of bulging, of hitting the rhizorius of all of these little mini complications that you can experience. So again, to summarize, the masseter muscle is the primary muscle involved in chewing and clenching. Paradoxical bulging is something I talk to every single one of my patients about because it can happen. It can happen for three reasons. Not enough units, you did not hit both bellies, or the patient um, is in that process of getting the tox settling in, so give it a full week. But utilizing that biphasic technique has really helped minimize seeing this complication in my practice. So I hope that helps. But bulging is part of the thing. It's part of the story. So just get comfortable talking to your patients about it so that God forbid if it were to happen, they know to call you and say, oh girl, it did happen. And you bring them back in and you just add more units. So when this patient messaged me with this video showing me that it happened, I brought her back in and I performed the biphasic injection technique, adding in more units. And from that point on, I have increased her dose to about 25 units per side, and we haven't had that complication since. So I hope this helps. If you can, please hit that su subscribe button so that we can keep chatting. And if you have any comments or want to share any stories, or if you have a request on a video that you'd love for me to record, please comment below. I'm happy to share. I'm an open book, and I'd love to share all my experiences and lessons in aesthetics.